Hey, this is Adam Nitty. Check out my interviews and all the other awesome interviews and content at informedbasedplayersonly.com. Adam Nitty. Check them out. Hi, everyone. John Liebman here. You're watching formbasedplayersonly.com. And today we are here with the one and only Adam Nitty. How you doing, John, Adam? I'm doing great, John. Thanks for having me. It's good to catch up with you. It's been a while. I think you were one of the early interviews we did on ForBasePlayersOnly.com back in, I don't know, maybe 2009 or 2010. Anyway, it's been a Sounds while. Sounds right. Uh, the Liminal CD had just come out. I still listen to that once in a while. I enjoy oh, it. Man. Uh, well, uh, so you're a busy guy. Tell us what you've been up to since then. Well, I guess the most recent thing that's occupying my time is the new record, which um, it's coming out a little later than I, than I hoped, but, but better late than never, I guess. So about, uh, we're about 75% done with it. All the material's been written for a long time, but now we're just working on most of the, the tracking process and just connecting with the players in the studio and getting that finished up. So Who might those players be? Well, so far it's uh, on drums, Keith Carlock, Kurt Covington, Jason Palmer and Sonny Emery. Uh, so far on keyboards, Chris Carver, Michael Whitaker, guitar, Adam Agati, uh, Shane Terrio, Tom Hemby, uh, saxophone, Mark Dalfin, and uh, maybe some more to add to the list. So, maybe a few more drummers? <laughs> yeah, <we're laughs> uh, Do you have a title for it yet? Don't have a, a title. T traditionally, when I do a record, I'll wait till it's, it's done and um, Inevitably, one of the the tracks on the record ends up being like a title track, and so depending on the feel of the album, kind of what the season is. Have you written all the music for it? Mm -hmm. All original compositions. All original stuff. That's great. And okay. what what can you tell us about it? Is a, a lot of your your uh, signature sweeping technique or <laughs> tapping, there, slapping? There will be some of that on there. It's um, th this. I guess this album will be similar to Liminal in. In terms of its um, diversity, uh, there'll be some some very groove-heavy songs. There'll be some more barn burner type tunes. Um, all in all, you know, I, I, my hope is always that compositionally, more than anything else, you know, it, it can kind of you know, hold its hold its water. And being a bass player, of course, some, lots of bass stuff that I'll want to you know, interject in there. But but I want it. Hopefully, it's going to be a record that just fans of music will want to listen to. Okay, well, we will certainly look forward to that. Uh, I understand you have something very exciting in the works, the uh, Adam Nitty signature Ibanez bass? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm humbled and, and thrilled to, to, to be a part of it. We've got, um, it's, it's going to be a six-string neck-through bass that, that's coming out. It's a, it's a sound gear model, but it has a lot of unique features to it that are going to I hope help it stand out amongst the, the rest of the sound gear line. Um, it's going to have a, a different string spacing. It's going to have different uh, preamp, different pickups, different spacing or uh, positioning of different the pickups. Different from what? Your, the rest of the sound gear is just. In, it's it's going to have um, electronics that aren't aren't found in any of the other models. Right there. I bet you're excited. About I'm that. I'm so thrilled. Yeah, yeah. Ibanez is. is uh, been a great company to work with. I've been with them now for about three and a half years. And um, when, we, when we first started working together, there was never any talk of, of doing a project like this. We really wanted to grow and cultivate the relationship over time. And, and it's got to the point where it's like, thought, eh, it might be a good idea to try this. So, and that should be uh, sometime before the end of 2014. We can expect to see that. That is, yes. <laughs> That's the hope. That is, that is, that is the, the word on the street. <laughs> uh, what uh, what about the rest of your equipment, your gear? What do you use? I'm also using um, Aguilar amplifiers and um, Deuterio strings. Those are my those are the three companies that I primarily have endorsement relationships with, and big big fan of the, the gear. And, and um, you know, there's a lot of great great stuff out there, but these are these are companies, as I was saying before, I've cultivated relationships with and. and it's great. It's kind of like having, uh, you know, supporters in, in your corner when you're doing you know, 
everything from live gigs to um, you know base clinics and things like that. They're, every one of those companies has been so supportive in terms of wanting to help perpetuate the, the vision. What else is keeping you busy these days? Well, you know the music industry has it's been changing, as, as you well know. Um, so people like myself, you know, out there, you know, independently try to diversify as much as possible. So my uh, my involvement these days with a bunch of different types of things musically is, is, is both exciting for me because I like a variety, but it's also necessary if you want to try to do anything close to having a remotely stable uh, source of income. So I do, um, I, st I still do a lot of uh, freelance performing and, and touring with, with artists. I, I do recording in town and now more, more often than not, remote recording. For people, you know, I've, so many people now have studios in their in their offices and bedrooms. It's become you know, real commonplace to to uh, share tracks, send them back and forth across the nation or across the world, even. So I, I do a good bit of that as well. Um, I've got an online uh, instructional bass instructional site, adamnittymusiceducation.com, that keeps me very very busy in terms of always creating new new content, and I'm also the the video guy and the editor and the customer service guy and, and the memberships guy and all that. So underneath that one hat is a whole bunch of little sub hats as, as well. I can relate to all that. I know you can. <laughs> so uh, you, you're, you're fully fully aware of, of how the online educational thing goes as, as well as the educational thing outside of that, I know. So. But uh, yeah, it's the fortunate thing is that it's all it's all music related stuff and, and um, I just sounds cliche, but I just I really feel fortunate to be able to still be making a living doing what I love. Right. Well, you're good at it. Well, thank you so much. How about the future? What else would you like to do that you haven't already accomplished? Well, gosh, I mean, the, I guess the gears are always, you know, spinning. There's, there's lots of other... I'd love to expand the roster of musicians that I've, that I've played with, um, do do some more of the overseas things. Um, sharing music, sharing my music with different parts of the world is, is always something that's kind of you know, at the front forefront for me. Um, I'd like to get on a more consistent schedule in terms of album releases and, and um, just try to try to pace that. It's, it's tough to do when you are, are busy with lots of different live and other performance and recording things, but it would be it'd be awesome to heck it'd be awesome to release something every year, you know, just to just to always, you know, stay stay in a prolific sense of, of writing. But you know Larry the cable guy? Yes. But Jimi Hendrix is dead. He still puts out That's three right. records a year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well to have, you know, one one hundred of, of the you know, of the of the far reach of, of his uh, catalog would, would be amazing. But, I'd love to do a live record after this one. That, that's something I definitely, it's, it's already on the, on the on the planning list. I like to have, have plans to record at a studio in Nashville and have a live audience there. Do a couple nights of that and um, just get some, get some great players on it and just play some new songs, but also play some older songs with, with new arrangements. And yeah, I mean, those are just, just some of the things I like. Well, that's great. I think you still have a lot of notes left in you. I so hope so. We'll look forward to uh, seeing and hearing them. Last question. I don't remember if I asked you this last time we talked. I don't think I did. What would you be if you were not a bass player? It has to be something outside of music. Um, definitely, I would want to be a race car driver. Yeah. You, you know who shares that passion? Is uh, uh, Ron Carter, I think. Or, oh, is or is it Marcus Miller? Or maybe both of them. I don't okay. know. Yeah, I've always I've always been a fan of, of cars. I grew up around exotic cars. My father was a was a collector and, and restorer, and, and um, so I got the I got the car bug really early when I was when I was young. But I've dab dabbled in some amateur racing, but um, that's you know it's nothing that I, I make a living doing. It's just something that's that's a fun fun hobby. Yeah, maybe but, another uh, career. Maybe. On the side. <laughs> Adam yeah. Nitty, great catching up. Let's not yeah. wait so long before we do it again. Thank you so much. Thank you. Much luck and continued success to you. Thank you. Same to you. Adam Nitty. Thank you. I'm John Liebman. You're watching 4BassPlayersOnly.com.